Hello and welcome to Adventure All The Way. Um, you may be a returning viewer or subscriber and if you are, I'm so glad you've come. If you're new, welcome, 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 welcome. These are not the usual kind of videos I do. This topic, as you can tell by the title, is brand new. It's a brand new adventure for us and we're really, really excited. We have been talking about adopting our fourth child for two years now, um, almost two and a half years. Um, we've been really, really hoping and manifesting as much as we can, um, which is like a pagan version of praying, um, and, and really preparing in as many ways as you can prepare when you've never done something before reading lots of books watching loads of youtube videos um we've been joined we've kind of joined in and watched and listened and read loads of things on instagram with the adoption community that there is a really big adoption community there and really just made sure that we've paid attention to everything in the adoption triangle not just views from adopters um and we have had two years ago we had two initial interviews which is the very first stage um after an information evening with two agencies um one they both said no at the time because albert was too young amongst a few other things and so we decided to wait two years later we really really felt called to try again and especially after the death of my grandmother um before she died we talked about it a lot and I remember saying to me you're not gonna have another one are you and I said oh, I'm not gonna be pregnant again and she said oh good and I said we would like to adopt though which was like oh and you kind of I could tell in her face that she was like oh I'm not gonna see that <laughs> um but she was very supportive and very passionate about it and that kind of drove us forward like she would want us to do this this was this is this year is the year um so we approached three agencies and one said no and they gave quite a few lists of reasons and i'll go into in another video um but it was mainly because they felt that our existing children's needs were too high and we wouldn't be able to cope with another child um it was based on lots of assumptions i think rather than um actual evidence but the evidence that they did have did suggest that because that's what they saw when they came to visit us and they visited us did a zoom call with us and then they visited us with the children and i get it i get it these evidence they were presented with they couldn't say yes but it was really disappointing another agency said wait six months because of covid there's a big backlog backlog in the family courts like i haven't got a child that i could place with you that you would be a good family for but i might do in six months so come back in six months and we said okay that's fine and then we had this last one and the initial interview was yesterday so it is the 25th of june 2021 and um our initial interview was yesterday and it was with the manager with our with the first agency it was with a social worker who had to go then to her manager come back to us, come back to her manager, and all oh, da And um, it was a real pain in the bum. But this was actually with the manager so she could make a decision there and then. So we had had this initial interview and we had had an information evening with this particular agency back in November, I think. Yeah, November. And at that point, we were kind of hoping to proceed straight away. But at that point, my my grandmother was still kind of chugging along and we didn't know when she was gonna die um it could have been tomorrow it could have been six months from then so we were just like well let's just we can't put our lives on hold forever forever and then in the december she started to get really really ill and i said to them look we need to put paul hit pause on this hit the brakes because i can't deal with them both at the same time and they said no that's fine so they contacted me again in January and um, she had then died, as you guys know, because you saw the video and you know I was AWOL for a bit. <laughs> um, and I said, yeah, this just happened. I'm not in a good place right now. I'm gonna have some bereavement counselling and I need some time and then I'll come back to it. So then we spoke to them again at Easter and I said, um, around um, April, March, April time. And I said to them, look, we've got our fourth bedroom. 
done, we're just finishing up some DIY, I'll be in touch. Then I got in touch with them at the big end of May, beginning of June, and the person I need to speak to, the, one of the managers, was on leave. Everyone's always on leave. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. Go in touch. So we decided to pursue the other agency because they got back to me quicker. Although then, as you know, that's, as I just said, like that didn't go well and their time scales, they were, they took three months from first, from the first initial meeting to say no, um, which was painful, <laughs> painful waiting. Um, just being in limbo, like, well, we can't plan anything for the end of the year because we don't know whether we're going to be doing the adoption process or not. And it was really annoying. Um, so yes, we, um, that was um, about, 10 days ago that that happened. Um, and then we had this initial interview yesterday. So um, I didn't bring, I just realized I brought three journals to show you, but I didn't actually bring the one that has the list. Um, so we, I'd had several, I'm just gonna bring up the list because I've just blogged it. If you want to check out my written blog, all about adoption, all about our journey so far. It's adoption all the way. So instead of adventure all the way, it's adoption all the way dot blogspot dot com. Um, I will put the link in the description if you would like to read. I'm not a, the I'm not the best writer when it comes to blogs. I'm more of a I like fiction writing and like creative writing, but um, yeah, uh, it's 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 factual and maybe I may put more information in there and I won't like waffle quite so much. So. Um, Sorry, I keep sniffing. I haven't taken an antihistamine this morning and my allergies are playing up. So the first thing she asked about, I've got the blog here, so I'm just gonna read it as notes. Um, the first thing she talked about was our house and she was under the impression we still had three bedrooms and I was like, oh no, we have four now. And she was like, oh yay, that's great. Um, she was really, really kind and really enthusiastic. Um, and unlike the previous agency, I did feel like they not had it out for us. That's not what I was thinking, that just popped into my head. They, they already had some assumptions that they'd made and I didn't think they were ever going to say yes. Um, they were like, we were just a no for them. They had to be thorough, but we were a no. Whereas I didn't feel like this with her. I felt like she was very positive. Um, she also helps us. She knows people who are home educating and she knows that it's good. So that helped. But yeah, so she asked about the house, especially the bedrooms. She wasn't aware that we'd built the wall to make a fourth bedroom. Um, and that was a happy surprise. She talked about our area, what do we like to do in the area? Um, and we said, oh, we like to go to um, Ballard Lake. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to stop sniffing. Um, we like to go to Ballard Lake. We like to go to Great Wall Cops, as you've seen in our wildflower video. We like to go to the beach. Well, the kids do. I hate the beach personally, but um, <laughs> I take them there. And we like to go into the forest. We like to be at our paddocks and go up into the forest there. And we just like being outdoorsy and uh, in the fresh air. Um, and I said about the library and the parks and all that sort of thing. And uh, then she asked about our horses. She uh, she, apart she get, gave us our condolences for losing Obi last year, which was adorable. And um, we talked about the pets in the home, what kind of breeds they are, and and a little bit about their temperaments. Um, then she moved on to our relationship, how long we've known each other, which we've known each other since we were small children. Um, so we've grown up together. We've always always known each other. I don't remember. Yeah, neither of us remember the other not being an important person in our lives. So um, that's an email. Um, <laughs> so that's, that was, and she was like, oh, <laughs> so cute. Um, and then how long we had been um, together in a relationship and how long we've been married, which is kind of, it's only like um, 11 months between our anniversaries of getting together and, and getting married. So then she asked about our family, especially those who are close to us. Um, and are part of our physical support network. So we've got my parents on one side of town and the other side of town where we are. And then we've got Phil's parents close by and my sister lives um, down a little, uh, kind of a couple of towns over. Um, and Phil's family are a bit more spread out, but um, you know, they're there if we need them. They're not gonna babysit because they're too far away, but you know, we can, we can always ring and be like, Meh, if we feel like it. Um, then she asked about Phil's job and how he'd cope with the pandemic. Now, I may have mentioned this to you, and I certainly haven't mentioned this bit to you. Phil works in funeral services. He works for Co-op Funeral Care. If you've used them, you'll know. Um, if you've used his particular branch of, um, specialist branch of Co-op, then you'll, you'll know. It's a woodland burial site. Um, it's beautiful. It looks like a forest, but it's a cemetery. It's amazing. 
um, and he's recently been promoted. I haven't shared this, I haven't shared this anywhere really, apart from um, close family. He's recently been promoted. He was a funeral service crew, so he was the chap who collected the deceased and drove the limos and the hearses and all of that sort of thing. Um, and stood outside going, oh yes, you're here for the Smith funeral, yes, this way, kind of thing. Um, and now he is a funeral director, which um, is, he now arranges funerals and then leads the service, like, makes sure the music are all done and makes sure everyone needs, if any, anyone needs anything, it's there and directs the funeral service crew, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that sort of thing. So he's recently had a promotion, um, which is awesome, but it does mean that he's out of the house more and, um, oh, the captain here, hello. Um, and we miss him, but the financial, you know, pay, pay rise was awesome. <laughs> then we discussed our faith and how we'd moved from traditional Christianity and a patriarchal system to a more matriarchal spiritualist paganism, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't think we, we try not to label it, but we sometimes we had to, like on the census. Um, but we touched upon how our previous belief system didn't fit with our ideals in our relationship and um, and in our general view of life and how we have found more peace in our current system and stillness, mindfulness, and it fulfills us in a way that traditional Christianity never did. Um, and then we talked about finances, if we had any debts, how much savings we have, that sort of thing. Um, then we talked about our hobbies and any volunteering we've done. As you've know, I've mentioned it before, I am a rainbow leader, a very passionate rainbow leader. Um, <laughs> so Phil used to volunteer as a sailing instructor when he was about 16, 17, so we talked a little bit about that as well. Um, I think being in sole charge of, and he also instructed people, members of girl guiding, so I think that's scarier, being in charge of children on the water in a boat than um, being in a hall. With like 15 of them so <laughs> yeah we talked about our hobbies and things that feels like to do and things that i like to do and then we moved on to the children and you know i love to talk about my children uh, we didn't talk a lot about them but we talked about them as people and we touched on charles and bessie's additional needs but mainly we talked about how much we'd prepared them for adoption and um how much we'd shared with them about what our plans were what we were hoping for and then how much they'd shared with us about what they were hoping for um, Charles would really like a little sister, just purely because then there would be three girls and three boys in the house. Hashtag autism. Um, <laughs> but, uh, oh dear, this chair's a bit creaky. Um, <laughs> Bessie has always been team little sister, along with Charles, because she would like to have a sister because she only has two brothers. But she recently has come round to, actually, if I had a little brother, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, because then I'd be the only girl in the house, and mummy and me could have mummy and daughter time, and it would be just special for the two of us and she was like oh it wouldn't be so bad and her her aunt is the only girl in with three boys phil is being one of them and um and then obviously her two uncles so she was like mm, auntie sarah has three three brothers mm. and she's really cool i was like yeah see it's all right being the only girl with three boys so um she's come around i don't think albert cares albert's just like i just want a little baby in the house <laughs> so you know he's not or a little child he's not bothered he's not bothered so we just talked about that a little bit and um we talked about how their um charles and bessie's additional needs have prepared us for a child who's been affected by trauma and loss because a lot of the behaviors are very similar um, although obviously for our children who are securely attached there can be some attachment difficulties with autistic children um, and there are attachment differences with our, with our children. Excuse me. Do you mind? She's like, no, I don't mind at all. Could you just... There we go. Sorry about that. Jessie wanted to say hi. Um, she's not going to sit on my lap for very long. And she was very... Um, she felt very confident about that. Seriously, all of the emails today. Um, so then we talked briefly about our health. Now, I'd already discussed my health with them and how I've had um, difficulties with anxiety in the past, specifically around the time of my grandmother's illness and then her death. Um, after her death, the anxiety went away. Good. And Phil is healthy as a flipping ox, so we didn't even talk about him, apart from to say that. Um, <laughs> but we talked a lot about that with a social worker previously in the, in the um, agency, so... We then talked about how we deal with stress. Mainly we talked about how Phil deals with, deals with stress because again, I've already talked to them about it before. Um, Phil likes to play with the children. He likes to play video games and he likes to have a nice bubble bath because he likes bubble baths. 
they don't relax me in the same way they make me fall asleep so they do relax me a bit but phil just likes to sit in the bath when he's stressed and watch a film and i'm there and he's like in there three hours and i'm like you're coming out he's like yep okay dad retreat <laughs> um it's not the kind of bath where i sit in and, and chat with him um, and then we finally talked about uh, what kind of children were waiting with the agency and what kind of child we saw fitting into our family. Um, she said there were some older children, like seven, eight years old. There were some sibling groups. There were children with additional needs. Obviously, all children have additional needs, especially all adopted children, um, because it's different. It's really different. So, um, but diagnosed things is what they meant and um, things with official diagnoses, children with official diagnoses and then they said they have some children who will need early permanence which is another, otherwise known as foster to adopt um it's something that we're really interested in um and i will touch on that in another video about what it is and why we're interested in it um we said zero to two clearly because um only because albert is four and uh, he will be by the time we complete this journey he will be five um or almost five but then it'll be a three-year gap between him and if they're two there would be a three-year gap um and we have two years between charles and bessie which was really really tough and sometimes they feel like they're the same age um and then we have three years between bessie and albert and that is a better gap for us we liked the three-year gap bessie was big enough to cope with and understand mummy has to feed the baby right now mummy has to do this with the baby right now and or can you help me with the baby she was old enough to get that whereas Charles just wasn't he was a year and 11 months when Bessie was born so he was just like I don't care <laughs> yeah. um but yeah so um obviously if we got a very young child there would be more like a four five year gap and and that's okay with us so um and we said that the children had asked for a sister but they don't really mind um as I said they've kind of gone round to it doesn't matter which team we're on because having another child in the house is just amazing and they don't mind anymore um we did always think it would be nice to have a daughter but we love our boys and we would love another boy so I don't like neither of us neither of us really mind um so we discussed if we were happy to explore early permanence as I said or foster to adopt and we said very passionate about it when we first heard about it we were like what my heart how would I deal with with what if they they came to us and we were fostering them and then we had to hand them back like how would we deal with that and um we actually took it to the children and said what do you think and they were like what do you mean what do we think that sounds like a really good idea that sounds like it's the best thing for the child why are you worried about it and I was like oh I was worried because it would make me sad or it would make you sad and they were like well yeah it would make us sad but that's okay like we can feel sad and then we would be okay and I was like oh I think I'm so Sometimes we can be so consumed with making our to make sure our children are happy that we don't think about they need to be sad sometimes. They need to have hardship, they need to have some strife. Otherwise, how are they gonna test their strength and their courage? Um obviously you don't want them to have ridiculous strife, that's a horrible experience, but they do need to have some adversity because a perf the perfect life is not going to do them any favours. Um something that will smith said in one of his red table talks recently actually is that you know you need to you need to have some adversity otherwise you're not prepared for the real world um so overall it was a really positive meeting and our one question we had was what is your answer because with the other agency as um i've talked about in my written blog if you've read that um and as i said earlier it took them three months to go no not at the moment um and it was very disappointing uh, mainly because it took so long because <laughs> we were in limbo for like three quarter of the year um so we decided ahead of this meeting that we would ask her can you tell us what your recommendation is going to be and she said yep yeah, i'm i'm the manager so i don't need to go back and check with anybody i can just say now and then she was very happy for us to put forward a registration of interest which is an application form essentially um so she's going to finish up her report that she did on us she's going to send it to us for us to check correct anything if it's wrong fill in the application form and send it back I was like Aah! I was trying not to when she said it I was like yay <laughs> I was trying not to just like burst into hysterical um joy and jump up and down but um uh, yeah, afterwards once we um once we got off the video call I was like oh my gosh and then just like ah 
and cried and Phil got a bit teary as well and I went and rang my best friends um, or text them and was like ah. so this was our first adoption vlog the initial interview um, I'm really glad that I get to share this journey with you and I can't wait for the next video stay tuned they will these videos will come every single Wednesday and I will talk a little bit about I will update you I will talk about what I'm doing and um, and you can see the journey firsthand thanks a lot bye hello or welcome back to adventure all the way the adoption diaries so these are a series of videos talking about our uk adoption journey as it happens um we're not doing vlogs after the fact we're doing them right here right now if you haven't checked out my written blog it's adoptionallaway.blogspot.com and the link is in the description <laughs>